Rattenreich, a brand new alternate universe RTS with animals instead of humans is now officially available on Steam in early access. Today, I wanna to go over some of my thoughts in a basic review sort of way, as well as look at and discuss their roadmap. First up, I would like to thank the developers of the game, however, for giving me a copy for free. All opinions in this video are my own and I'm not paid or compensated in any way to present a different view. In just one sentence here at the beginning, I can say that Rattenreich is an interesting game. It's taken the very clearly passionate developers years to finally get it to the point it is now, and it definitely has some potential, but I'm very conflicted on whether or not I would recommend buying it at the moment. For reference, the 230 Steam reviews as of writing this script sit at about a 62% positive review rating. Now let me first give you a quick overview about the game and some of the background. Feel free to use the chapters or timestamps to skip ahead. So Rattenreich is set in what appears to be an alternate and even darker if that is somehow possible version of like a mix of World War I and World War II as we know it. However, where you would expect humans to man vehicles or storm trenches, in Rattenreich all soldiers are actually animals, rats, mice, lizards and monitor lizards, as well as cockroaches will be at your command. Granted, the cockroaches aren't available yet, but are planned to be in the game at a later date. Each of these animals sort of represents a faction that can be loosely traced back to a faction or factions in our world from the early 1900s. For example, the German influence on the rat faction is quite obvious. The game was successfully funded on Kickstarter in late 2021, with over 2,100 backers pledging just under 94,000 euros or just over 100,000 US dollars, which actually hits some of the developers further stretch goals. While a skirmish game mode, as well as a console release were both funded, modding support and multiplayer were not reached at the time of the end of the Kickstarter. I do want to touch on some of this a little later on in the video, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. The game costs about 20 bucks, though whether the price will increase after early access is over is not known, but it is something other games tend to do, so keep that in mind if you're worried about having to spend more money down the line, but I'm not trying to feed into your FOMO. The early access for Rattenreich launched with three campaigns and a tutorial mission. However, calling them campaigns is a little cheeky in my opinion. On the roadmap early access release, it says this, introductory campaigns are available for different factions. Here, a campaign, in my opinion, usually refers to a bunch of missions that follow each other through a loose story. However, each campaign at the moment just really includes a single mission. These are not missions that I would say have a ton of replayability either, leaving you with maybe a few hours of gameplay if you take your time and go slowly at best. These missions do show off different environments like a desert or Pacific type islands. At least you get to see most of what Rattenreich has to offer so far. The lore and story in and around these campaigns have actually received quite a lot of attention, not just from the developers, but also from the community. If I search Rattenreich, in an incognito browser on YouTube, it shows Rattenreich lore as a recommended search in the number two or three spot quite consistently. This brings me to my next point. I think the interest in the lore has to do with the way that the high quality cinematics and artwork being put out by the development team have really put a lot of focus towards that. The artwork, the videos, the cinematics, they are absolutely top notch. Whoever made these really deserves a lot of praise. The game itself visually is okay. I wouldn't say it looks bad, but I honestly wouldn't say it looks specifically stunning either. Sure, the rat mission that takes place in the trenches that looks very much like No Man's Land in World War I has a pretty decently detailed map, but I feel like you're just too busy microing your guys to really appreciate it. About microing, I will say this, as you will likely not have more than about 15 to 30 soldiers under your command at most times. Sure, you could spend a few extra minutes waiting for your call-in points to accumulate and call in extra squads, but that's not very ideal and you cannot fast forward the time. Yes, there is a call in menu. You can call in different sort of pre-made squads, but we'll touch on some of the units in those squads a little later. You will have to micro your guys because, well, the enemy will most likely outnumber you as you're attacking them. Now you can use gas and regular grenades to help overcome these larger numbers in a decently effective way. But as far as I know, there is no way to replenish grenades. You can't loot them off of bodies or corpses. You can't 
shared them between your men, so you can't create like one rat who has 25 grenades. You can't also resupply your men in the field. What they come in with is what they're gonna have. You want more, call in more guys. Your soldiers will also die really fast, at least sometimes. I'm honestly yet to figure out if I'm just really unlucky, but having played some of the different campaigns, I don't feel like the damage system is very consistent. Sometimes you will have one of your machine gunners mow down an enemy squad almost instantly, and sometimes it feels like you have to keep right-clicking enemies to not only tell your men to actually engage, but to even do any remarkable damage. I can't stress this enough. The damage system feels weird and somewhat random. Again, this is purely how I experienced it, and I'm very curious to see what others have to say about it. Also, in general, your soldiers feel a bit stupid, but then again, so do the soldiers of the enemy, so it kind of evens out. However, at least enemy soldiers will sometimes take cover or move away from throwing grenades. My soldiers didn't really do that, which again, reinforces that need to micro your men. Selecting individual soldiers can be a bit messy and take some trial and error. I usually just end up hotkeying a bunch of guys together in a group, have them close in within grenade range, and then let loose. Honestly, using small arms just seems subpar. Sometimes with AI and your own men more so than enemy AI, even refusing to engage targets unless you specifically order them to attack. The cover system is also very basic. A lot of times I would expect a place to provide cover, but I couldn't move soldiers into a cover slot, and this caused a lot of frustration. Also, if you do find, say, five slots of cover, when you have six guys selected, five of them will move to a slot each. However, the sixth guy just stays back and won't even bother moving. The pathfinding is also honestly quite atrocious, soldiers getting stuck or taking weird routes. At first, I thought I was just being overly critical, but it seems that more people struggled with this if I read some of the reviews and comments on the official Discord. On to the soldiers and factions, where I think there's just so much room for potential improvement within Rattenreich. There are five different classes in the early access release, with more planned, but we'll take a look at that in the roadmap section. The Rifleman, who is just equipped with a slow-firing rifle. The Assaulter, who has a submachine gun type of weapon and carries gas grenades. The Machine Gunner, who, well, has a machine gun. The Medic, who carries a pistol and can heal units in a radius near him with an ability, which is a timed recharge. And finally, the Rattenreich equivalent to a JTAC, who calls in airstrikes, who's armed with a pistol. Sadly, there is no difference between, say, a Rat Rifleman or a Lizard Rifleman or the Assaulter of the Monitor Lizards and the Assaulter of the Mice. Outside of visually different uniforms and helmets and different voice lines, each faction uses the same small arms as well as the, well, one mortar and one stationary machine gun. This is obviously a huge amount of missed potential. It would have been so cool to see certain factions having a focus on certain things. Say the rats having better assaulters, whereas the monitor lizards, who are supposed to be sort of similar to World War II-ish Japan, could have had some sort of close range bonus. This might come into the game later, but as of right now, the voice lines and skins are the only things that set different factions or races apart from each other. Just mentioning that the voices for the different factions fit their sort of real world nation equivalent, with the rats speaking German, or the Monitor Lizard speaking Japanese, for example. Bereit machen zum Angriff. Soldaten sind bereit. Wouldn't call myself a seasoned reviewer, and I definitely don't do many of these on my channel. I figured I needed to write all of my thoughts down instead of trying to explain myself while actively playing the game and then getting distracted. I would encourage checking out some Steam reviews for other perspectives besides mine. Honestly, my final verdict on Rattenreich is kind of twofold. On the one hand, I really like the idea of the game. The visuals, more so of the artwork and cinematics, are great. It's trying to do something something new, at least in terms of the setting, though I honestly forgot that my soldiers weren't human after just a few minutes in battle. Maybe some sort of like sound effect over different animal races would give them a little bit more flavor, like making the lizard voice lines sound a bit like the snake in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Maybe it sounds like a silly idea, but having a little bit more of a animal sound behind the voice lines would at least maybe make me not forget that my men aren't, well, men, they're animals. On the other hand, the game has me thinking to myself, 
myself that I'd rather play Gates of Hell, Company of Heroes, or an older Men of War title. Granted, the game is made by an indie studio, and the game is also kind of priced as such. The developers have a big roadmap with some major points on it that I could see being quite hard to develop and fine tune in the relatively short time they have given themselves. I think it's hard to not want to promise a lot, but you never want to over promise and under deliver and hopefully they can fit all of the stuff on their roadmap into the next 15 to 16 months. My personal opinion would be to keep this game on your wish list and save about 20 bucks for now unless you really like the idea of rats, mice and different lizards shooting each other in a dark World War 1 esque setting. On to the roadmap for Rottenreich which covers the time from now with the early access release on Steam till the final quarter of 2025 so about 14 to 16 months away. Before the end of the year the developers plan to release an update which will add two new soldier classes. The sniper which probably doesn't need much explanation as well as the engineer. What the engineer specifically can do like build or destroy fortifications or build sandbags is not specified though in this same update the developers plan to fully implement vehicles both for you and the AI. Currently the vehicles that you see in the game are sort of pre-programmed and cannot actually be controlled. Perhaps this new engineer can interact with these vehicles and repair them or be a counter to these vehicles with explosives, of course, I'm just guessing here. This update will also include a veterancy and experience system for infantry, probably allowing them to take more damage or be more accurate with their weapons the higher level they are. Besides vehicles, artillery will also be added to the game, allowing you to actually move them around as well as change your ammo types, probably something like smoke, regular high explosive, and gas shells. In the current build, artillery exists, but it's very basic. You even are not allowed or able to rotate them at all, which which makes them very useless, but at least this might make artillery a little bit more interesting. More missions will also be added for existing campaigns, as well as allowing people to manually save their game versus the way it works now, where the game saves at predetermined checkpoints in one of the missions in the game. A so-called AI capability expansion finishes out this update. Hopefully it makes the AI both of the enemies and yours a little bit smarter and it might make parts of what I described above no longer as big of an issue. Now in the second quarter of 2025, you can expect another update adding the AI skirmish mode, which has been very much looked forward to and requested, as well as a new campaign for one of the factions. Hopefully when they say campaign, I hope it means more than one mission. Not much is known about the skirmish, but all factions should be playable or selectable in it. Hopefully this will not just be a 1v1, but also allow larger games with more AI opponents and teammates for bigger, say 2v2 or 3v3 fights. Two more infantry classes, the Grenadiers and Flamethrowers are also to be added in this update as well. Now, Flamethrowers are rather obvious and don't really need an explanation, but Grenadiers might mean rifle Grenadiers or soldiers equipped with anti vehicle vehicle rockets, or perhaps both. So-called Grand Machines, which are unique vehicles, will also be added in this update, though I can't seem to find too much info about them, as well as another overhaul of the AI, or whatever, quote, implementation of global AI behavior patterns, end quote, means. Finally, upgrades for infantry and vehicles will be available. What this may change or do obviously has no answer, and it's over half a year away, but it's interesting to think about going forward. Forward. Now, finally, in the last months of 2025, we will get the much talked about and hyped up vehicle customization, something I myself got really excited for when it was first talked about when I learned of Rattenreich. Some early teasers and trailers also showed first person gameplay. Granted, that may have been cinematic or CGI footage, or maybe it was in engine. Either way, it got me and a ton of other people very excited. So to see that it's going to be added to the game finally is something to look forward to. It is just quite a bit away. Both the cosmetic enhancements as well as improving and polishing game mechanics probably didn't need to be a dedicated bullet point because this is kind of what people expect from an early access game, but it's on the list. Finally, the cockroach campaign will be a DLC. Whether this means that the cockroaches will be available for free or they come as part of the DLC, not really sure. I do hope though that backers who supported the Kickstarter four plus years ago when this update drops either get a huge discount or get this DLC free. Granted, a developer has said it won't be very expensive. I do hope that your earliest supporters who supported you almost half a decade ago are really going to be rewarded for their trust in you and your project all that time ago. A whole new faction opens up 
a lot of possibilities. On a Kickstarter, it's specifically said that, quote, they have a natural advantage due to their shell, providing them with extra protection in battle, end quote, regarding the cockroaches. Perhaps faction-based traits will be introduced at some point, something that actually might make the factions feel different from each other in terms of gameplay outside of just visually and audibly looking and sounding a little bit different being the only defining factor. While the multiplayer and modding goals were not reached during the Kickstarter, a Q&A on the official Discord does mention that both potentially might make it into the game, depending on how well the game performs in terms of sales and the ability of the developers to, well, make it happen. However, while a console release stretch goal was actually hit on like the multiplayer and modding, Runenreich may not be released on consoles anytime soon. This same Q&A mentions that, quote, after the full release on Steam, there may be considerations for other platforms, end quote. Now, I don't think the developers should lose focus and try to develop too many things at once, but I do feel bad for people who specifically backed the game with the hope to get a definitely unique RTS on consoles. Have you bought and played Runenreich yet? What are your thoughts? I am curious to compare the general vibe of the community with my own findings and ideas. To the developers of Rottenreich, I have a lot of work ahead of you, but there's seemingly a massive community that really wants your game to succeed, and I can only hope that you won't disappoint them.